Well, it really is a great idea. To talk more about what support is out there for police officers, I'm now joined by one of the UK's two police wellbeing officers, PC Danielle Threader. Danny, thank you for coming in today. Can you just tell us what a wellbeing officer does? Oh, we do lots of things, really. <laughs> um, a wellbeing officer can be a number of things, um, from phoning up our colleagues to check on how they are, to supporting them if they've been through something traumatic, um, to just supporting them and being there for them, going out for a cup of coffee with them mm -hmm. and knowing that they have someone to talk to. Um, and it's not always um, post-traumatic stress, is it? Sometimes it could be related to, say, maternity, pregnancy or, or other matters that you would lend that supporting ear to. Yes, of course. Um, so I uh, contact women who's just about to go on maternity leave or um, parents who's going on uh, adoption leave or parental leave. Mm -hmm. um, it's offering that support to them. Um, it's a lonely old time when they're off with a newborn baby. Um, lots change in the police as well. So it's keeping them up to date of what's happening in the job. And you're doing this obviously as a police officer. You're, you're, you're keen to stress you're not a trained counsellor. You are a police officer first and foremost, but you're still doing this role. I am, yes. And I really enjoy it. It's, um, it's nice to speak to all the officers across the force and even the country. I've been lucky to talk to other officers in other forces. Um, so it's getting to know them and, and it's experiencing just that, it. That talking that's so important. We've just seen it in the film there where the officers were saying just getting officers speaking to each other about what's causing their, their stress is so important. And that's something that you're doing, isn't it? Just getting those officers to open up to yourself. Yes. Um, it, the thing is, is that officers have that ruse of we need to be brave. We need to be the heroes. We shouldn't show emotion. But at the end of the day, they're brothers, sisters, mothers, mm -hmm. husbands. They're, they have families and they have feelings. And underneath that uniform, they have got feelings. How important is it, do you think, to, to take people out of their working environment, enable to, to, to enable them to open up? Because I know you've been working on a project recently, haven't you, where you, you, you're building a garden. Tell me about that. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> our, <laughs> our wellbeing garden, there's our beehive. So the, the bee initiative um, kindly donated that to us. And we've got bees now in our garden, which will produce our own honey and give to our members. Um, but it's a space for our officers to go and relax and unwind and a, a safe place. And you're, you're actually doing this yourself, aren't you? You're helping putting this together. Yes. So <laughs> me and my uh, the our secretary, Anna Lee, yeah. we're, we're, yeah. and her husband and my daughter, we're uh, volunteering in, and making it ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know the importance of, of speaking to other people because as a police officer on the front line, you dealt with some very traumatic situations yourself, didn't you? And, and you needed to, to reach out at one point. Yes, I had an incredibly um, hard time in 2019. Um, I went to six CPRs, um, where sadly three of those uh, members of the public passed away. It's very, it takes its toll. You're, you're there at the end of their life and you're there at a horrific stage of that family's life. Um, we can't just switch off. You do go home and think about that um, at the end of the day. And I did find it tough about opening it up um, and it did take its toll on my well-being and my mental That's understandable. Health. I mean, one would, but six in a row, that's really tough. And thankfully, there was help available when you reached out. Yes, I was really extremely lucky enough that um, our occupational health have counsellors. Um, I did take that step myself and pushed myself for counselling. And I had an amazing boss as well who looked after my well-being as well. He recognised I needed help and he was there to talk to and push me to speak up about it. If, if you hadn't though, if you had not had that help there, do you think that would have affected your own policing career? Do you yeah. even think you'd still be there? No, I, I, in all honesty, I probably would have left the job. Um, I, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't go in crowded spaces. It really affected me how I was doing my normal day-to-day -day thing. Um, and just having that little bit of support and opening up and talking about it eased me back into the workplace. And I think it's really important to talk about things, what what you've experienced. Well, a lot of officers obviously would have experienced a very tough 18 months because of the pandemic. From someone who's who's serving now today, tell us what sorts of pressures have police felt over the, the, the last year and a half? Oh, they've been under incredibly amount of pressure. Um, 
they've had to learn new legislation that was constantly changing. They were going into people's homes, not knowing if they've had COVID themselves or if they're going to pick it up from members of the public. They've had members of the public spit in their face and cough at them. They're the, that we had officers going home worrying about taking COVID home to their families and having that in the back of your mind every time you go to work going, am I going to catch it today? Am I going to get seriously ill? There's a huge pressure on them. And we were just talking off air where you said that you know of officers actually taking off their, their, their clothes before coming into the house because they were so scared about passing anything on to their yeah. families. Uh, there, there's been officers who I know of who were staying in hotels because they couldn't go home because they had a vulnerable family member um, stripping off on your front doorstep just to go into your home. Um, so now you've done this role for a few months and you're obviously seeing the benefits of how it's helping other officers. How hopeful are you that this could potentially be rolled out to more forces around the UK? Oh, I hope that it does. Um, well-being is really, really important. We're extremely lucky in Gwent Police that we've got a chief office that are extremely supportive of well-being and their officers, and they're really pushing that. And I like to hope that other forces will be doing that for their police officers. We like I, I joined the police to help members of the public. I'm helping my colleagues now, and I would like to think that there's someone else like me somewhere. So if there was anyone else out there serving at the moment who, who was thinking about perhaps going into this role themselves, after your experience now, would you suggest it to them? Do it, 100%. Uh, the best thing is, is that when you see an officer come out the other side of having going through mental health problems, PTSD, or even maternity and coming, out, coming back into the workforce confident and knowing that they can be a good cop at the end of it, it's wow. so rewarding. It's a fantastic role that you're doing. I just wish there was people like yourself when I was in myself. Uh, Danny, thank you for joining us.